Facebook. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I hope so. I was just showing my friends on Instagram these. Isn't this just the most divine bunch of anything? These are freshly grown British sweet peas. Oh, hi Debbie and Beatrice. Hi Gillian. Hi. Hello, hello. Nice to see you all. I mean, just glorious. And I am so excited because I'm going to be joined today live by Roseby Morton, who is an amazing lady. She runs The Real Flower Company. And those of you, I should actually mention this before I forget, those of you who may have seen this in the current issue of Lizard Wellbeing magazine, there is a competition with them to win 12 amazing bouquets. So you get one every month for a whole year. How incredible is that? These are some of their beautiful things. Aren't they just gorgeous? I mean, who would not? want to win that yeah Lynn Gail absolutely gorgeous beautiful beautiful and all you have to do is click to enter it's easy you've got to be in it to win it go to lizardwellbeing.com and you can click Amy hi Amy my love Amy's on Facebook so Amy my digital editor working from home she's putting all the links up to everything guys on Instagram you can either go off lizardwellbeing.com or you can go to Linktree that little blue link in my Instagram bio. All of you know it by now. Hi to anybody who's new. If you don't know it, click the little round circle in my profile and beneath that it says Linktree in blue. And if you click on that, all the links to everything that I'm going to talk about today will be there. Okay, so there'll be no need to write anything down. You don't need to worry. Thought about it, done it all for you. Now, before I talk to Roseby, I do have something to show you. Yes. So it happened. My little pink cheek. I don't know if you can see it, it's very subtle because I have washed my hair, washed my hair this morning. And I just thought this was the right way to go, you know, slowly, slowly. This has always been my motto, I guess, in business and in life. You crawl, you walk, you run. You know, you build it slow and you build it strong. Firm foundations, all of that. So I guess, you know, hair dye. Yep, let's start slow. <laughs> Little toe in the water. <laughs> So this is it, and actually, when Lily saw it, she said, oh, you know, Mum, I've got something a little bit stronger, and I just want to dip the ends in something stronger. So I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. But what I liked about this, and many of you are asking what I used, okay, so it, I used a Lee Stafford product. I just bought this online. Um, I put the link. I know, Amy, um, sweet, you'll put the link on Facebook, won't you? Um, or it'll be in Linktree. I worked it all out for you. And you know, it only lasts one to four washes. So it's not mega. It's called Kiss of Colour. And I am actually thinking maybe this weekend I might just go crazy. I might just do the whole lot. So maybe on Monday I'll be standing here or sitting here even with um, a head of bright pink hair. Who knows? Anyway, I think it's a bit of a success. What do you all think? I'd love to know. Please let me know. Facebook, just reply. Pink hair, yes, no. Okay, Instagram, you can just let me know. Um, Joanne, are you seeing me all right? The picture is not too good. How is it? Bracewell, Angela says, I think the streak makes more of a statement than overall. Yeah, I think. Heaven Devo, Devon Heather rather says, do it. Yes, lots of thumbs up here on, on Instagram. Mm, what do you think? Maybe Instagram are a bit more more creative, more artistic than Facebook? What do we think? Yes, no? Be really interesting to see the difference. So without further ado though, I am dying to show you some amazing flowers. Not only the incredible sweet peas, but also this lovely box that arrived fresh from the farm. And it's celebrating British flowers this week, which was just a great excuse to talk to a great British flower farmer. So I am going to click on my Instagram link. Now, Rosebury, my darling, you need to request to join me. Okay, so Rosebury, if you are down in Hampshire, on your farm, hopefully you've got some connectivity and hopefully I will be able to join you. Because these, they send them out overnight. So you can go to the realflowercompany.co.uk, I think their website is, and Amazingly, if you put your order in before four o'clock, they then send it out guaranteed overnight delivery. So, and I've been to their flower farm, it's near Petersfield, it's absolutely beautiful. I did some filming there for this morning, about 18 months ago, and it's just incredible. It's a beautiful piece of farmland, it's on chalk downland, I think. Uh, and what I really like oh, whoops, about 
the Real Flower Company is that they are real flowers in that they are traditional varieties, they're scented. So modern flowers, when you go into a florist shop, you know, you get that lovely waft of all the flowers. But then when you get your bunch of roses, particularly back home, they don't really smell of anything. So that's the great concern. Whereas Rosebury's flowers, you know, just that one rose alone, I wish you could smell it, okay? I'm going to hold it up in the hope that you can take a big sniff. And they grow, some of their flowers are grown down in Hampshire, so they're British grown flowers. And the others, particularly some of the long stem scented roses, are grown in Kenya. Now, as you know, I'm sure I've got connections to Kenya. I've got family in Kenya. I've had a family home in Kenya for decades. And uh, I'm just going to find my floristry scissors, which are, here we go, which are somewhere just to cut the string. It all comes in brown paper and string. It's all very traditional. Um, and I've been also to their flower farm, which is just underneath the foothills of Mount Kenya. So actually very near where my family farm is. And they are grown sustainably. They provide amazing employment for the local community, the majority of whom are women, hand cutting the flowers, packing them. And then they are flown in the hold of planes that are in the air anyway. Usually they're in the air full of tourists and trade and all of that. So they're not really taking up any extra space. And they actually worked out that the carbon footprint of these roses grown under natural sunlight, bearing in mind that in other parts of the world, like parts of Europe, for example, where they're growing flowers, they're growing under artificial heat and light. And then they are usually trucking them in refrigerated containers across the roads using fossil fuels and all of that. The carbon footprint, incredibly, of a Kenyan rose is actually less of one grown in Europe, which is quite interesting when you add all the things together. So, incredible. Anyway, I'm hoping that Rosemary, not to mention all the employment for literally, um, you know, severely disadvantaged people. Yes, we have the real flower company and that will be Roseby with a bit of luck. So I hope my connectivity holds. Guys, you know what to do. Instagram, if you fail, please hop over to Facebook. Vice versa, Facebook, if it goes a bit dodgy, please hop over to Instagram. Hello, Roseby, can you hear me? I can hear you. How, how are you? I'm just going to adjust my screen because when we split the screen on Instagram, um, the top half of my head disappears. So I'm going to have to sort of... I'm going to have to just duck down a little bit. I have to say, Rosby, your boxes, I was just saying to my friends here, this is the beautiful farm flower box. So this was picked yesterday, was it? Yes, it was. Yep, fresh off the farm. Amazing. And how and much of this came from Hampshire and how much came from Kenya? It's all, it's, it's celebrating the best of British at the moment. So we're very much all, all British where all we can. All British. How absolutely so lovely. Remind me what these are, because I love these little balls of blueness. Well, I actually can't. I, you're, you've frozen at the moment. Oh, I'm hear. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because we use up so much bandwidth. Yeah, Instagram is saying that it's paused. Can you hear me on Instagram? Because we had this you, problem. Uh, the blue ball is probably an equinox. Is it slightly thistly looking? It looks like a thistle. It looks like something that Eeyore would eat. Don't you yeah, know? Equinox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really so... If, uh, if I'm still frozen, I yeah. think if Instagram want to see it, they probably need to go to Facebook to have a quick look. Um, otherwise, I hope we're frozen on a decent picture. Is it frozen of me making a funny face? Do, do we look all right? <laughs> okay, so in that case, let's just whiz through. Tell me about British flower celebration. Is this something that's unique to this week? Yeah, it is. So it's something that was set up by the, the Covent Garden uh, Market Authority. Right. Basically, to celebrate British, because as we all know, the British are very good flower growers. You know, uh, English country garden is, is entirely, that, that is us. We, yeah. we do it. And I think they were trying to, to make people more aware, a bit like, you know, buying your food locally. Yeah. It's all buying British you know, sustainable, environmentally friendly, etc. I mean, I heard you before about Kenya, which is absolutely right and Good. fantastic. Out of season, we need to support um, and really celebrate, you know, flowers from elsewhere. But at this time of the year... Yeah, British, you're absolutely right. Right yeah. in the heat of summer, you know, yeah. flaming June, hopefully, if the sun comes back to us, especially for things yeah. like roses. 
So tell me, because your, your flowers do actually smell. So why are your roses different from other commercial roses? Uh, probably in the word commercial. <laughs> we, um, we set it up um, to, to grow garden roses, and garden roses are notoriously not very commercial, and we're probably cutting about eight stems per bush, as opposed to a commercial variety grown you know, all around the world, probably are cutting a good 25 stems bush. Wow. So, so you are yeah. only, you're cutting a th two thirds less commercially. Yeah. Basically, and it's, it's a reason why probably our flowers, you know, our roses are probably slightly more expensive. But, but they're so they're, beautiful. I mean, look yeah. at that. I can show people on Facebook, Instagram, guys. I will show you, I promise. But I do, that's just too beautiful not to show. And I know you've got varieties like Margaret Merrill, and the scent of Margaret Merrill is extraordinary, isn't it? Well, Margaret Merrill is the reason why I set the company up. Really? Oh, and she's gone. Oh, Roseby, I'm so sorry. This is such a trial, isn't it? Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to... Uh, what am I going to do? I, you see, it won't let me post it to Instagram until I add a title. So I am just going to put on here um, Floral Friday. Friday. And then I'm just going to put Flower Chat. I can fill it in later. <laughs> uh, so I'll do that and I will press post. And then hopefully that at least will save that first little bit to Instagram. And then we will pick up again if I press my stories. Um, do you know, it was so well behaved, wasn't it? You know, all the weeks I've been doing it, it has been so brilliant. And now, oh, now it's put a weird filter on it. Can you imagine? Uh, I don't want to have a weird filter, thank you. I want to be normal, but I do want to go live. So let's see if it will let me. Yes, it says I'm now live for the second time. Hello. I'm so sorry. Guys on Instagram, what I've done is I've just saved that first little bit of chat. Okay, so it will be there. I'm sorry you're going to have to watch two films. Um, and I will try and get Rosemary back in just a moment. But I just want to show you what I have been talking about so you can see because I know the screen froze. So Rosemary was talking about the difference with these traditional varieties. And it was just staggering to hear that they cut two thirds less from a bush than a commercial rose which is obviously going to affect price and commerciality and all of that but you know that does not look like a rose that you would normally buy in a florist does it It looks like something that's come out of somebody's garden and i just wish that you could smell them because they are absolutely sensational so this is a beautiful box and it's come actually i'll show you what it came in um it came in this lovely box here whoops uh, the Real Flower Company. I hope you can see that with its beautiful satin ribbon here tied around it. And it says on it, farm fresh and sustainably grown flowers. And I just think it's so nice to give a shout out yet again to a great British brand doing things sustainably, ethically, producing an amazing product that's a bit different. Yes, it's a bit more expensive because it's all about traceability and provenance. It's a female founder-led brand. Yes. So, you know, for me, that's ticking lots of boxes um, as to the brands that I like to talk about here. So there we are. This is a special bunch that's done in celebration of British Flower Week. And just, you know, if you are buying flowers, you know, maybe you're out and about in the supermarkets or whatever, buying supermarket flowers, just have a little look this week, especially at the labels. Where are they coming from? Were they grown in Britain? And remember that just like farmers and other growers, we have flower farmers as well as those producing great food. Now, in addition to that box, I'm going to pop that down. I will try and get Rosby back. But she also incredibly kindly sent me this gorgeous bunch of sweet peas. And I have to say, oh, the smell. Does anybody know who bottles the scent of sweet peas? Please tell me. I'm going to be doing quite a lot on fragrance next week. Actually, I'm just playing with my necklace. This is my little Neroli necklace. I mean, I, I just love flowers and I love the smell. Neroli has an amazing scent. This is the necklace that's on half price, which until I think it finishes on the 30th of June. So not long. You just put Neroli 50 
in your code on Lizal Jewelry, and that gives you half price. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about flowers. So this, I have to say, is a very special bunch, and I'll share this with you before I try and get Rosemary back, is that this was the beautiful sweet pea that they bred, the Real Flower Company bred this, and they launched it at Chelsea Flower Show. And I was lucky enough to go to Chelsea, and I was there on the press preview day, and uh, I walked past her stand, and of course I went up and said, hi, how are you? And um, I said, oh, I love that. I, I just not long launched Liz Our Wellbeing. And of course the house colours for Liz Our Wellbeing are this beautiful dark pink mixed with a little bit of pale pink. So you can just see there the two colours. And I said, wow, look at your new sweet pea. It's so beautiful. And she said, oh, yes, we've just, we've just launched it. And I said, oh, what's it called? Because I'd love to write about it. And she said, oh, well, they just give them numbers when, when you launch a new variety because it's quite expensive to name um, something. And I said, oh, you need to call it Liz Our Wellbeing because it's, you know, it's just, I've just launched and you've just launched this and it's my colour and I love it. So we couldn't do it officially because you have to go through lots of complicated form filling and it's very expensive. But unofficially, this is known as the Liz Our Wellbeing Sweet Pea. So there we are. And it's obviously growing in abundance now with Roseby. I'm going to try one more time to see if we can get Roseby because it's so lovely listening to her story um, about how they turned their family farm into a flower farm. Now, now my phone is not responding to my finger touch. Here we go. Yes, Roseby, bless your heart. You are still there. Let's see if this is going to do any better. Hello, Roseby. <laughs> I don't know whether you heard that, but I was telling all my friends here the story of this beautiful dark pink sweet pea and how you bred it. Yeah. Is that, are you referring to the Liz Earle sweet pea? Ah, yes. <laughs> the Liz Earle sweet pea. We'll have to do... Can people buy bunches of these, bunches of this beautiful colour? Or, um, or will it come mixed? It'll... You can try. Um, okay. But they tend to be mixed. Yeah. Um, Side. They are You're beautiful, mix. I mean, I have to say, the, the whole beauty of Sweet Pea, actually, is that you get this amazing mix of clashing colours. You know, I would not normally think about putting mauves and purples and reds and oranges and pinks all together, but they just look stunning, don't they, together? Uh, nothing clashes in nature. <laughs> You're quite right. Now, tell us about your background, because was it your husband's family farm that you then converted to a flower farm? Yeah, it's still very much a, an arable farm as well, actually. I mean, our, our flower farm is only 12 acres out of about 500 acres. Oh, gosh. So it's, um, it's a very, in, well, it, I say intense. I mean, the 12 acres have got, we've got about 35,000 garden roses. 35,000? <laughs> and, how, and how many people do you employ picking? Well, at this time of the year, we normally employ about 10. At the moment, mm. thanks to the dreaded coronavirus we've yeah. got about three so right. as you can imagine we're um, we're up against it but we're we're doing our best um and yeah. rob who's our flower manager is working his socks off as mm. are the yeah. lovely people who work there so we're it employing is. a few bricks um but we, we tend to employ latvians because they are yeah. being they just get picking they understand, they understand how picking but i know that you've also done work with mental health charities haven't you because there's this great thing about connecting back with nature and kind of picking and and just sort of the benefits that that brings of being back in the outdoors I know there are lots of garden charities that that work with people that have all kinds of um, different conditions and you know whether it's from physical or mental or recovery I've actually worked at Lambeth Palace Garden with a project for refugees part of my charity Live Twice we funded a project in the Lambeth Palace Garden, um, rehabilitating refugees who'd come from war-torn countries to actually help them to learn language skills and just get a sense of peace and stability from being in the garden. Oh, I'm so sorry, Roseby, we've lost you. Honestly, it's just, I'm so looking forward to the day, I know I keep saying this, but I'm so looking forward to the day when I can do this properly. You know, and I know many of you have said to me, okay, Liz, you know, what's going to happen? I started this in lockdown. It started as a one-off, just a cosy chat from me at home. And then kind of I did it the next day and then I did it the third day. And you know what they say, you know, by the time you've done something three times, well, it's a law, isn't it? So... 
Um, so yes, I am looking at ways to continue it. And actually my digital team are doing various tests at the moment using things like Zoom and other platforms. Um, oh gosh, it's gone again on Instagram. Can you believe it? You guys on Facebook, you are so much better behaved. You really are, you know, you are smashing it today. Uh, so what I have to do again, I'm very sorry, is I have to do, so I'm gonna write take two on here. Um, and then I'm going to put flowers part two, <laughs> probably end up with part three and four, flowers part, I'm typing it with my thumb, part two. There we go, shall I add a little floral emoji? There we go, post that, let that go off. Um, and hello, yes, Lynn, I'm sticking to Facebook. So I jolly well think you should. I mean, that seems to be the stable platform. Anyway, I think what we gathered from Roseby, and I'm so sorry, Roseby, um, let me just click back on Instagram because now I mustn't forget to patch them in again, otherwise they'll get really upset. Um, so I have to go to my stories and then I go up here to a little circle and then I go to where it says live and then I press the button and hopefully take three. Hello Facebook, I'm still here, <laughs> Instagram mother, waving the lizard sweet pea. How fabulous is that? Oh my goodness, Roseby, you are such a joy and I'm so sorry we missed you. But I hope that you heard a little bit of the chat and had enough to be inspired to at least check the labels from where your flowers are coming from to hopefully give a big shout out to the Real Flower Company. Their margins are tiny. We're not able to offer any discount. I'm not being paid to do this. I'm just doing it because I think they are a fabulous brand. Um, and I just really want to give them a shout out and some support because they do amazing work both in the UK and in Kenya as well. So just just gorgeous and i wish you could just take a big old sniff i'll give you one one last smell take a deep breath oh and breathe you know how important breathing is so moving on i have got some other great things to share with you i've got water spilt on my table so i just actually wanted to show you in fact maybe i should bring those sweet peas back because i wanted to show you a couple of little things that i found really helpful these are little tips for flower arranging yes because as many of you know who look at my instagram i do usually do a weekly flower arrangement it's usually on a sunday because that's my down day and i have a bit of time and i'm either picking stuff that's in the garden or i'm mixing it with things that i bought from my local florist and a couple of things one is if i'm doing a big arrangement and i'm using a, a vase like this what I will do is very often you have flowers, but they're all a bit floppy and they don't kind of stay in the right place. So this was a tip that I learned a long time ago, possibly from Sarah Raven, the great garden guru, who actually also, I'm so proud to say, she is my columnist. She is my garden columnist um, for Lizard Wellbeing magazine. So we always have this great feature called In the Garden with Sarah. There she is. If you haven't seen Sarah Raven. Um, that is her. She's an amazing lady. I did a podcast with her. I'm sure I did, Amy. Did I, did I dream that? No, I think I have done it. Maybe you can find the link, Amy, and pop it on Facebook. Um, she trains the doctor and she's very scientific in her approach. So when she came to cultivate all her lovely seeds for vegetables and for blooms, then uh, she would grow rows and rows of different varieties and she would analyse, you know, which one, like a scientific experiment or a medical test, you know, which one performs well, what was the soil type, how many blossoms, all of that. Uh, and it's just, yeah, she's just great. And she writes really well. She's a great writer. She's written lots of books. And she writes for me in the magazine, she writes about veggies to grow, what to plant now for a bit later on, and all the different things that you can be looking out for in the garden. So I went to one of her workshops years ago, and uh, she, I think she was the one who gave me this tip, and that is you get some sellotape or some scotch tape like this, and you basically, you're making a grid. So you're pushing... Um, I'll do maybe three bits of tape over the vase, like this at the top, in one direction. Uh, so that's what it looks like, like that. Okay, just the top of my vase here, because this is quite a wide neck vase, so things are going to flop a bit. 
and then you make a grid the other way. So if I do three pieces of tape going the other way, one in the centre and then two either side, you will see what I'm up to in just a moment because I'll show you. Okay, so you end up with that kind of effect. Fill that with water, obviously, and then you can put your flowers in and they're not going to flop because they're contained and yet you can't see them. I mean, normally if I was doing this, I would trim, obviously trim the tape around here so that you can't see it or you'd have foliage and leaves covering it up anyway. Um, but it just means that for those kind of floppy stemmed things that you want to keep standing upright and position them precisely where you want them and not have them kind of all scooshed to one side, then you can do it. And obviously you can make the holes as narrow as you like, depending on how precise you want them. So that was one little tip that I thought I'd share. The other tip, and this actually came from you guys on Instagram. I went to lunch with somebody not that long ago and I saw on their table they had one of these. And I loved it so much. I, I took a picture of it and I said to my friends on Instagram, because I couldn't find it anywhere. I mean, I searched online and I was doing like kind of multi-hole vase and all sorts of things. Um, couldn't find it. And so I just posted a pic on Instagram and said, look, does anybody know what this is and where it's from? And I basically tracked it down. So I have popped a link. And Amy, I know you've got a link, haven't you, sweetheart, that you could pop onto Facebook um, because they are quite hard to find. Um, but what it does mean is that you can just use a few blooms. So it means you can be super economical. You can literally just put one little stem, maybe one little rosebud or a few little herbs or whatever. And you just, it sits on your table and it looks really substantial. It looks really pretty. If you wanted, you could have a long line of them. Can you imagine? Or you could make a little, you know, square shape or just whatever. But I, or they could sit on your dressing table or just, just gorgeous. Anyway, I thought now was a good time to share that with you because I'm talking about flowers and flower arranging because it's floral Friday. Um, and so thank you Instagram so I forget who it was that told me about it but you can add a little bit so for example I've got this this is garden eucalyptus and you can use just tiny sort of little leftover stems I think the lunch that I went to was possibly back in the autumn so they had um, dahlias and you know all sorts of things so I mean just like that it's one one little sprig of sweet pea and one tiny bit of foliage and you know it's not some huge grand elaborate arrangement but also what's really nice about having it on a table is that if you are sitting opposite people you haven't got great big flower arrangements in the way you know you can't you have to you know talk around it this it just sits there and you can still talk over it isn't that pretty i love it thank you for all the hearts i absolutely love that too so something else i absolutely love uh, and this is another female founder-led brand, which I really wanted to share with you. And it is called Agua de Madre. So I'm not sure if this is sort of Spanish vibe or Italian vibe. Maybe Italian vibe. Um, look at that retro label. Isn't that fun? Now, this is a water probiotic drink. So it's like a water kefir. I'm always careful with the word kefir because kefir technically only applies to milk proper milk products because it uses the lactose to digest but this has really good beneficial bacterial cultures in it i mean in fact it says on it i'm fresh two trillion live cultures two trillion isn't that amazing what scissors do i use for pruning flowers i just use these these are they're just called flower scissors so yeah they're just nice easy easy to handle so this one this is a new organization newish Two ladies in London, and I'm going to read you their mission statement because I just loved it and wanted to share it with you. They said about their company, which is called Agua de Madre, which I think is Mother's Water. Uh, and it says it's an homage to mothers. Encourage madres, mothers, to shine in all forms, nurturing our guts and communities along the way. Isn't that brilliant? absolutely love it so this one is fermented so we've got organic cane sugar that's the fermentation process that then is converted to the bacteria uh, it's got figs organic figs organic lemon organic ginger organic ginger syrup and some himalayan salt in filtered water and you can see the bottom there it's quite cloudy that's the fermented bits at the bottom 
So you need to be very careful. It says don't shake it. And the reason for that is it's fermented, so it will be live. Um, and I've got here, so the one thing I didn't bring into my sitting room was a bottle opener. I wonder if I can open them with scissors. This is where I slice the top of my thumb off. Probably shouldn't do that, should I? Um, oh, fizz, yes, you hear that? That shows it's live. Oh yeah, I can see it fizzing in the bottle. Oh, it's always something, isn't there? When you're rushing around, trying to do it all yourself. If it's not technology, oh, failing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one is original. So this is the lemon and the ginger. Oh, this is so good. So refreshing as a non-alcoholic alternative. And it's also low sugar. Mm. So if you want to get the kids off like lemonade. Oh, that's so good. So refreshing. This is, how much sugar is in that? That is, yeah, that is really low. So per 100 mils, 3.4 grams of sugar which is tiny for, um, for a soft drink and it says a proper thirst quencher agua de madre does splendid things for your innards <laughs> love it a most highly cultivated beverage with a staggering two trillion live cultures per 100 ml isn't that amazing and it says it's made with live tibicos don't know what that is it's new on me live Tibicos culture found on the pads of the Mexican Opuntia cactus. Wow. So it's Mexican. Fantastic. But I know it's brewed in London. Absolutely brilliant. They've given us a discount code. Uh, so if you want to buy that, you can go to their website, which is, uh, must say on here, yeah, aguademadre.co.uk. Amy, I know you'll link to it. The link is on Linktree because I checked earlier. Uh, and that is um, Liz Loves, and that gets you a 15% discount. And this one I really like. This is the lemon one, and there's also this one, which I'm going to have to try and open again, uh, Water Kefir, and this one, this is really lovely. This is good for a floral Friday because it's pomegranate and hibiscus. <sighs> Love hibiscus. Who's tried dried hibiscus flower tea? That is amazing. I got to know that in Kenya. Um, hibiscus tea and it's so pretty because the tea is bright pink oh yeah we're nearly we're nearly there um, don't show health and safety this video will you because I'll probably get told off oops there we go lovely look fizzy 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 you see how it's fizzing so again this has I'm not sure if you can buy it in stores you might be they're a tiny company have a look at their website um, I can hear it can you hear it <laughs> Uh, so this one I actually gave my youngest to try without telling him what it was. I didn't tell him that he was going to have two trillion live beneficial bacteria microbes because he knows me and gut health and he'll be going, oh, mum. So I just said, look, I've got this new kind of lemonade -y stuff. Will you try it for me? Hmm. That is so refreshing. It's slightly sweeter, I would say, so it probably is good for the kids. Oh, look, it matches my hair. Look. Oh, it's all carefully planned, you know, my lives. They're not just thrown together. Oh, no, no, no. I know they may look like that. <laughs> uh, and you can get bigger bottles too. So you can get the big. Isn't that so pretty? That's a lovely recyclable bottle. It's got the Kilmer cap. You can make your own kombucha and store it in there afterwards. Um, so this one, let's see how much sugar this has got in it. So this is, um, yeah, 3.4 grams of sugar, which for, you know, a sweet, fizzy drink, is amazing that has trillions of beneficial bacteria is just genius so well done girls I think you're doing great and I'm super happy to support you and thank you for the discount mm. one other thing actually that they do because you can imagine if you are making this this is the lemon one um, or the sort of original one that's got lemon in it with organic lemons you're going to have lots of bits of organic lemon left over so what have they done they've been very clever they have made this Flor de Madre. So this, I think this is about five pounds a jar. Yeah, and it's a ginger and lemon infusion. And I had some of this this morning. So this is, you can make it into a hot drink. I'm going to be very careful because I'm, otherwise I'm going to spill it all over my carpet. But can you see in there? So this is the smell. Oh my goodness. Do you know, we're going to have to invent some kind of smelly vision, aren't we? Because I know I've had sweet peas. I've had this amazing lemon and ginger. 
the smell is just something else. So this is a mix of organic root ginger, organic lemons and organic cane sugar. So that's it. And this is a byproduct of the fermentation of their drink here. So it's really sustainable. Um, it says once opened, keep in the fridge, use within a month. And then they've suggested here some extra tips. So you add a teaspoon to hot water. That's what I did this morning. It was absolutely spot on. Um, and then you can add, if you want, you could sprinkle in some turmeric, some honey, some black pepper or cayenne. I mean, just, just lovely. Really great. And again, you can get 15% off. Liz loves. Thank you. I hope your business thrives, just like our gut health after eating all of that. Actually, patting my, or drinking all of that rather, patting my stomach. This is what I was wearing. I couldn't really show you when I was in the studios with Lily on Wednesday because I was sitting down. But this, I've checked, it's Marks and Spencer's and it's still there. This was this really pretty floral skirt. And as I said before, what I like about it is that it looks like a wrap skirt, but it's not a wrap skirt. It actually is stitched. So you're safe, you know? So if you go out in a sudden gust of wind, we'll have to tell the Duchess of Cambridge this, won't we? Because sometimes she gets caught out. I know she has to put lead weights in the hems of her outfits now. So if she's getting, you know, walking down the steps of an aircraft or something with all the world's um, paparazzi in front of her and there's a gust of wind and it blows her skirt over her head and uh, she shows her pants to the world. Well, in case you are ever in that situation, you needn't worry if you're wearing this because it is stitched, but it just looks as if it's wrapped and it's nice and flat here so it just means that it's a bit more flattering and actually sorry before I go something else to tell you this is another great brand so I'm putting this on again because I had a lot of comments about it on Wednesday I didn't mention it but I found this in the back of my cupboard and it's a brand that I first worked with a couple of years ago called Lavender Hill Clothing and so I put it on because I wanted something navy to match the, the pink and navy in my skirt see well being pink obviously look Sweet peas, skirt, see see the planning that goes into this? <laughs> uh, I wish that was true. Um, so anyway, so I got this and then after I had a few comments about it, I thought, oh, I'll just look them up online and see how they're doing. And they're doing really well. They're a South London based company and the vast majority of their things are made in Britain, in Leicester. And they use other few other outlets. There's one in Austria, I think one in Italy. Um, so, you know, we're not talking fast fashion, we're talking sustainable, ethical. This is made of modal, which is, comes from trees, and it's, uh, it's a sustainable fibre. It's super soft, so you probably, I mean, you can't feel it, can you? But hopefully you can tell how soft it is against the skin. It feels really nice. I don't actually want to take it off. And it lasts. I mean, I've literally had this for years, and, it, you know, it looks as good as new, so it washes really well. So I dropped the founder a note, Isabel, and uh, said, look, you know, would you like to offer a discount code? Because I'm really happy to talk about what you're doing. You're doing great things. Check them out online. And she came back and said, yes, absolutely. 10% off. Liz loves. Um, just key that in. But go and take a look because they're doing such good things. They've been making masks. Uh, of course, everybody is now making masks and they've got really fun designs. They've got masks for children. There's some really lovely pink masks, of course, well-being pink masks. But I have to go online and buy some of those, I think, for myself. And then I can be out and about wearing well-being pink. But um, well done, Isabel. I'm really pleased that you are doing well, that your brand, hopefully, fingers crossed, is doing well. Because so many of these smaller family-run brands have not been doing so well. So really happy to give you a shout out, another strong female founder-led brand. So what else do I need to tell you about? Um, I think that's kind of it. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. Today is Friday, of course. That means it's newsletter day from Liz Our Wellbeing. You've got to be in it to get it. So Amy presses the button at four o'clock today, UK time. So if you haven't subscribed, please hop over to Liz Our Wellbeing and subscribe. There is the most amazing recipe for a cherry sherry trifle. Try saying that after a few glasses, uh, which is absolutely epic. You will really not want to miss that. Plus there's some more offer codes and links to podcasts. I've just recorded my Friday Five podcast, so that will be coming out later on today. I'm talking all about vitamin D and gut health and COVID. All the more reason, of course, to be sipping our glasses of Aqua de Madre with their trillions of beneficial bacteria. So if you get an opportunity, do please download. That's about 10 minutes of a quick Friday Five podcast in your ear to listen to. So I'm going to be back with you tomorrow. 
I am going to be, when am I going to be tomorrow? I think I'm going to be in my kitchen tomorrow. Yeah, gosh, what day is it? Saturday, where am I? Who am I? What am I doing? Anyway, it's going to be a fun one. It will just be me, so hopefully there won't be any split screen and connectivity issues. I'm so sorry, Instagram, that we had the issues earlier, but thank you for staying with me, for bearing with me for, um, for three separate goes, and well done, Facebook, for being sturdy and stable and all of those things that we need for a bit of resilience and reliability in difficult times. Anyway, I'm sending you lots of love. Have a great rest of your day and I shall see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.